I'm James and I'm the CEO of Bridelux and I would like to introduce our first speaker of today, Mr. Colin Carey. For more than two decades, Colin has continued to set trends in the worlds of weddings, parties, interior design, home entertaining and hospitality. He has travelled over 40 million miles around the four corners of the world to design and produce some of the most talked about events ever created. Layer on top of that, Colin is the go-to man for radio, TV, magazine and many other online publications for his expertise in event planning and lifestyle advice. He is the author of 10 books. He has also launched Food Inc. Food of Overwhelming Distinction, a catering company that offers the services of several iconic James Beard and Machine Star chefs to design your menu and cater for your event. So let's have a look at some of his work. I want each and every room to have a wow moment. When guests walk in and say, oh my God, I can't believe they did this. Whenever I walk into a space or a room, I like to design it with fresh eyes and the way it's never been used before. And of course, to work in a tent for me is like having a blank canvas. The sky is the limit. It's all about how we make you feel. We create bespoke luxury experiences. Experience is a constant state of change, and our design starts with your DNA. Then we add to that the season. We take into consideration, is it spring, summer, winter, or fall? Is it morning, noon or night? And layer on top of that what you smell, touch, taste, see and hear. And that's how I tell your story. I've always said that great style comes from ruthless editing. We continue to travel around the world on behalf of our clients in search of the most fabulous and the very finest. I really don't think the world needs another product. We are far too oversaturated, but what we can do is ruthlessly edit to get rid of the 98% that doesn't work so we can put the right 2% together and stand out amongst the crowd. Anytime I take on a project, it's all about creating an experience. Some people focus on the food, some people focus on the flowers. I focus on achieving excellence in every one of those disciplines, so I'm able to play maestro and orchestrate your story in a meaningful and a memorable way. With some companies only design and some only produce, we're an all-encompassing creative team that executes every single aspect seamlessly and flawlessly. People often ask me, what's your favorite event? I always take the Switzerland answer and say, it's the next party. And which is pretty obvious because that's where all my creative energy and my entire team is focused on delivering. My mission is to inspire people to live well. And true luxury is not about dollars and cents, but it comes from delivering personalized experiences from understanding that each event needs to be embedded with the client's DNA. And that's why no two of my parties ever look the same. We're in the business of making people happy. That's why we do what we do. That's why I love what we do. Good morning, everybody. Or say good afternoon. What a nice group of people. Thank you so much for coming, James. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, this is James' first time to bring Bride Lux to New York City, so welcome. You've already bought a great taste of London to embrace New York with us, and uh, thank you for making us so welcome. I was with James in London early on in the year where I spoke at, at the event in London. I had a great time. So happy to be here. I always like to know who I'm talking to. So do we have any brides in the house? Put up your hands. Wonderful, absolutely. Industry professionals? Yes, my family, my friends, <laughs> the hard workers. <laughs> so we at Colin Cowie Lifestyle believe in love. We believe that love never goes out of style. So I'm going to show you how I told the love story. At the end of the day, we're really we're storytellers. We listen, we want to find out what your DNA is, who you're about, what you're about, and then tell a story with a carefully thought out a beginning, a middle, and an end. So fasten your seat belts. I'm going to take you on a little journey around the world of some events I've done in just over the past year. And then afterwards, we can do some questions and answers. We can talk a bit about trends and how to create a big wow moment. So the first wedding is a backyard wedding that we did in Southampton, which you just saw the video of. So now I'll take you through and show you exactly what we did. We uh, invited all of our guests for our rehearsal dinner the night before at the Parish Art Museum. 
I love the idea of these doing two very long tables. And if you have a look at the centerpiece as we get a little closer, you'll notice that it's all rectilinear glass and wooden blocks because the food was served family style. So I put down the flowers first, and then the food was superimposed on top of the flowers, and it came in a course of three different courses, which is a very fun way to kind of create an interactive dinner that's chic, elegant, but at the same time has a lovely Hamptons casual feeling to it. This is my favorite moment at night, and when the candles are burnt halfway down, the wine's taken its effect, and everyone's got a smile wrapped two and a half times around their face. So we do what we do. The next day in Southampton was the bride's family home, weekend home. Uh, guests received their seating assignments, and we brought them out into this fabulous view overlooking the bay. And I covered the swimming pool, so we had one straight beautiful walk, and we had this magnificent view outside. 72 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. And I love this idea of all the different arches. Went from a green arch and got more and more dense in floral foliage until you got to the actual hooper itself. You can see that beautiful lineup. Epic shot. And then we made our way to cocktails. So I liked the idea of creating a veranda outside of this beautiful tent. So it was all focused and centered around a central bar, which gave us service from four sides. And just working with the greenery and very, very few flowers, we created these beautiful seating arrangements before making our way into a very fabulous dinner. I love the idea of working with a lot of fauna. And that's that magical moment when the sun goes down and the candles start to come alight and it starts to get rather magical. Right? Then we came inside to the dinner tent. Uh, you'll notice the lovely thing about this, everything was white on white on white. And the walls behind, you can see, were actually a light box as well. And I created this big wow moment in the middle, which was a chandelier made out of crystals and foliage and orchids and garlands and chandeliers. And then later in the evening, you'll see how that really started to come alive. Great band, great music. Now, as the evening wears on, the lights start to get a bit warmer, the amber start to come in, and then towards the end of the evening, it was full color, as one would expect for a great nightclub, with uh, our DJ Coleman in the house with us this particular night. And then, of course, this is my favorite moment now. There's that same wine moment again. Dance floor's packed, everyone's having a good time, and of course, a great beginning always deserves a great ending, right? Now fasten your seatbelt, we're headed to Malibu. We did this last summer. Uh, the director from the bride and groom was, we want to have a very intimate ceremony. So I made sure that no two guests were seated more than 20 to 30 feet away from the bride and the groom. And the funny thing was that they'd been engaged for six years. And I didn't realize that the aisle was a question mark. <laughs> that stays between us. <laughs> And then, because I just wanted the bride and groom under the arbor, I seated the wedding party in the back row, which is really the front row. That's just a rumor, but it's not a rumor anymore. The bride wanted a very long aisle. She walked down an 80-foot long aisle with faux grass, which actually matched the real grass. And we love those unexpected moments where we had a little canopy that was pulled with a piece of monofilament from underneath, and they were rained and showered with rose petals. We made our way to cocktails. And I love the idea here of like setting the flowers in ice versus putting them elsewhere. Cool idea. Now, we made our way for dinner. And this is a very contemporary home that has the longest privately owned swimming pool in California. So the idea of doing a sperry tent or a tent there just didn't seem like it would fit with the architecture. So I built a truss structure, covered it in a canvas, which was the same color as the cement which cleared the home, and got it right up, butted up to the extra edge, edge of the pool. There wasn't a bad view in the house. Either you faced a thousand candles or you had the sea view the other, in the other direction. Looking down the scent, I created a crystal chandelier uh, with these beautiful hanging uh, droplets of glass. And then heating was built in either side. Wolfgang Kuck did the food for us. And there was that magical moment again when everyone's looking good and feeling better. And to get everyone in the mood, I brought Christina Aguilera to get to three or four songs. <laughs> Got everybody off their seat, gave everybody. And then one of my favorite things, I did all these Bond girls 
Uh, wonder if I was designing the wedding for myself. But <laughs> if you have a look at any of those you know me well, these shots you see in the foreground here, I do them at the beginning of every dance party because it buys you at least another hour on the dance floor. If you want the recipe, it's equal parts, espresso, Tia Maria coffee liqueur, and tequila. Okay? <laughs> Three good reasons to stay. You yeah. have beautiful live ball with their um, initials, and I built this incredible nightclub the same way. I stretched blue sheer fabric over a blue velvet truss system, which gave us the idea of seeing indoors and outdoors, but once again, a contemporary structure. I kind of built it up, so we created a, a Malachite-style dance floor that was looked from underneath. And just you know, work with some fun, cool artifacts, make it three-dimensional. Or a great bar. And sometimes I love it when you have a bar that's tight like this. And this is, I think, the bride's third outfit. <laughs> there were multiple outfits. And of course, DJ Khaled in the house. And this party went till 5 o'clock in the morning. I've never had more lost and found in my life before. <laughs> like, who leaves with a Tom Ford jacket but doesn't take the trousers? I mean, it was kind of interesting. <laughs> you know, I think that was outfit number six. Okay. And we love a good neon sign. This now hangs in their, in their, in their den at home. Oh. Love you madly. So now we're going to South Africa. And just so you know, the South African rand is very, very favorable to this US dollar right now. So for the cost of a three-day high-end wedding in Mexico, I took people to South Africa for seven days. And it was quite extraordinary. So we took people, first of all, to Kruger National Park, to Sabi Sands, and we took a host. We took five, six different camps, because the camps are small. And on the second night, the guests thought that they were off to the game ride going back to the camp, but had all vehicles, I think had 75 vehicles, bring everyone to a sand river, a dry sand river. And we threw this incredible party for them. The beautiful Jun tent, bonfires. Now realize, this is in big five game country. There's no fences at all. So it's sentries, like every 15 feet, with a big rifle and a 308 in every barrel. Lovely seating and, of course, a wonderful array to show our South African cuisine. I'm kind of the ambassador from South Africa, if you didn't quite get the accent part. Uh, which started with the gin tent. Gin is like, gin is in South Africa, what happened to tequila and vodka and, and, and bourbon over here. There's like a hundred different gin distilleries now. Of course, not a single flower. We wanted to keep it authentic and real. And I bought in this amazing Sangoma. Sangoma is a witch doctor who got to talk about the bride and the groom and the couple and this particular area and shed everybody, including bride and groom, on the top of their seats and laughing hysterically and crying. Uh, we then flew over to Cape Town. We did three days in Cape Town. And uh, the last day in Cape Town, this was the wedding, 6 p.m. at Boschendal Vineyard. So in front of each one of these trees, I had a violinist playing, playing strings. And you walked into the manor house at the end. You can see the guests coming, making their way down. And we had little birds tweeting in the trees. So that really was the journey. And you came into the manor house, and you received your first glass of champagne in your seating assignment. Then you walked through the gardens. And this is like the rose garden, and then to the herb garden. And at each stop along the way, I had a musical instrument, another gin cocktail for you, and a little appetizer. So it was a beautiful 40-minute walking cocktail as you made your way through the, the, the gardens to get to the ceremony. We love signs. I think a well-informed guest is a happy guest. And look how beautiful this epic shot is with the Otaniqua Mountains in the background. And there's a little stream, and I actually put our hooper just above the stream. And I wanted an element of shade, so we had this billowing canvas with very, very beautiful, low, soft seating. I don't want to do anything too ornate. You don't have to really compete with nature in an environment as beautiful as this. And then we brought in, you know, the dollar goes a long way. So I said, I would like a whole symphony. So I think I got a 50-piece 50, a 50 orchestra, and I think we paid less than $10,000. It was unbelievable. Yeah. And brought in the four tenors, and then we did cocktails afterwards, and then opened up the doors. I love the wine barrels for coffee tables, being that we were on a vineyard. South African flower is the, is the Protea, is our national flower. Then did these long tables and served an amazing array of typical South African cuisine, showcasing the Protea. Also had a very, very beautiful rustic, luxe rustic feel to it. 
And I think at the, at the Troy Curtis is here from On The Move. He brought in this incredible entertainment for us with his DJ band, and you're going to see another version of that at the end. And then for after we've finished with the On The Move, we then brought in, not the cake, where is it? Coming. Three tons of fun. They were amazing. And they only do 80s cover songs. So the cool thing is that every guest knew every word to every song. Right? And then from there, when everyone thought this was, this was the party, just when they thought this was the party, I opened in the back a nightclub. So you came into bang, and this is where we went from midnight until 5 a.m. My parties tend to last long because I keep them well fueled. So we had these different arrays of lighting in the, in the, in the backdrop. DJ Lowell also came in from New York to perform for us. And then every hour, on the hour, I had a pop-up form of entertainment. So with an African drummer, it was interesting. And then at some stage, we started doing this African face painting. And at 3 o'clock in the morning, we put the UV light on. And everything. oh my god, I can't believe it all looked like this, <laughs> which is kind of cool. And I kind of kept it tribal and African. And of course, soak up the alcohol so you can drink more. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that was the last shot of the night. And I think the next one we found people in the flower gardens. I mean, it's pretty cool. The typical Colin Cowie party. <laughs> we start mild, but we end wild. <laughs> uh, this is a wedding I did um, last month in St. Bart's. Uh, beautiful at the, at the Latwani Hotel. So this was actually five days in St. Bart's. So we did... Shaloa Beach, we did Latisse St. Bart's one evening, we did Bagatelle one evening. This is also a group that really loved to party. We had a step and repeat at each party that we did. And I wanted to do something extremely contemporary. This was when I took the first meeting. I also did the, the, I also did the two gentlemen, I did their engagement party in San Francisco on the roof of uh, the Museum of Modern Art. When I took, went to take my first meeting, I said, well, can we talk about flowers? And the one group said, I hate flowers. <laughs> First time I've ever heard that. I said, oh, wonderful, we'll just do greenery. He said, I don't like anything green either. I said, how about your back pocket? <laughs> he loved that shade of green. <laughs> so we came up with something that was very contemporary and clean. And you'll see how we did an almost flowerless wedding. So I like the idea of very simple, clean, contemporary. So we did these mirrors, columns, trusses, as you went from larger to smaller, which made, and the deck was also built. So it gave you the idea that this deck was twice the size of what it actually was. And when the sun set and the light caught this, it was so chic, so minimal, and so fabulous. So you're starting to get the pattern now, right? I don't have a particular look. My look always comes from you. Right? And then I add my magic to it and edit. Cocktails. And then we brought in Alpha Patali, who's one of our Food Inc. chefs, who oversaw the food for us and collaborated together with uh, Letwani. And then we also we had On the Move do our entertainment for us. But how beautiful are these tables? I did all these serpentine tables, and everything was with spheres spheres of glass, spheres of stainless steel, spheres of, of, of mercury. And this was the almost flowerless wedding. And all the tables were ombre in shades of blue and aqua, as you can see with the embroidered napkins. But it's, I like the idea of like taking one element, one shape, and doing a lot of it en masse. It was created a great statement that way. Alfred turned out spectacular food that night, which was beautiful. And then we had some side performances taking place. I also covered the pool, so we could do a great idea with the, the DJ and the band something for everyone. Okay. And then with a lot of fireworks, a lot of fanfare, I brought Paris Hilton into the crowd. And I have to tell you, I thought she was just a pretty face. The girl really knows how to spin. It's amazing. They, they kept going, and uh, I think this went till about 3 o'clock in the morning. We really had a good time. They had the best time. And uh, that comes to the end of the weddings. So I think what's also important to do, one of the things I always say, at any event, whether it's cocktails, arrivals, your dinner, the dance party, you always want to have a wow moment. Okay? Take a lot of one thing and make a big statement. So here's just a couple of my favorite wow moments. Uh, this, was, this rose arrangement that you see was probably from the wall to about here. 
So how do we make roses that long? We took lucite rods this high, and we put the rose on the top of them, so you're able to get something that was about 12 feet in diameter. But you walk in and have one statement like that in a room, it makes for a big statement. Love the idea, very inexpensive, just using a clear tent, this is in, 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 in Park City, in the middle of the winter season, two men getting married. Love the idea of using antlers uh, for the chandeliers, kind of fun and rustic. And right where you see this big champagne display, guests thought that that was a champagne display, but when the champagne disappeared, the two grooms actually got married right over there in the middle of the, of the party. It's an unexpected ceremony. Love of a confetti drop or a rose petal drop. There's not one person in there that's not smiling. It's like fireworks, right? Yeah. The most efficient way to burn money, but I never saw anyone cry during fireworks. <laughs> one long table with absolute precision. For this particular wedding we made, for every one of the guests they had their own individual hand-painted, handmade wedding cake. <laughs> so, this is a little, a little over the top, but <laughs> we like that. I did the opposite here. Instead of seeing the flowers down below, I did a black. This is an interesting story. So, the couple came to see me, and the father said that I was too expensive, which is really not true. <laughs> Because we have Team Cowie and we have Colin Cowie and the signature and the full nine yards, we have a price for everyone. And uh, so they came and the father said this wasn't going to work and they hired somebody else to do the wedding. And this person said that they were building all these custom things and the client wanted to go and see the custom things in progress. Well, it wasn't a customer, it was coming from the rental company. She just said they were custom. Cut a long story short, seven days before the wedding, I get a call. Can we please see you tomorrow? The bride arrives, hives, she can't even see her eyes are bloodshot, they're closed, the groom's got the shakes, the mother's hysterical, and the father's now really sweating. Okay. And they said, can you do our wedding? I said, when? He said, next week. So we had the, this was the first wedding ever to take place at the top of the World Trade, the new World Trade Center. So it was a bare space to work with, with exposed ceilings. So I, I, I figured I'd take advantage of the view, and then whatever we built, we built concisely. And so I did this black mirrored runway, and we did the white flowers on top as a reflection and a white floral wall behind. It actually turned to be a very beautiful wedding. I love the idea. I'm really not... The only floral wall you've ever seen is that wall. I don't do floral walls. I, th I like to work with flowers in a more natural way. I like them to be their beauty. Uh, I'd rather build a wall and put wallpaper on it than flower, cover a wall with, with, with flowers. I think we all, we all kind of speak differently as to how we use materials. But here you can see we made, a, on the left-hand side, we made a, a tablecloth out of flowers and orchids. I love the hopper that you see on the right was actually Maureen's daughter's hopper back over there. Uh, Maureen runs our Saratoga office for us. And so this hopper was hanging from four cables in the ceiling. So the whole thing was completely transparent. And so the idea with the, with the, with the chairs and everything was completely in the round. So there was no side barrier in this space. Everybody had a front row seat. Loved this. Just before we bought the wedding cake out, we bought out the chandelier girls. <laughs> Something for everyone. Huh? But they were a lot of fun, if you're into hot wax. Uh, chandelier girls to chandelier, champagne. So we did this at a party. With, this was for a wedding party, a reception. We'd actually done the wedding already in Italy, and we did a reception at Cipriani for the guests who weren't able to make it to Italy. And so she was actually on a swivel, so she was able to turn up, sit down very easily and top up your glass of champagne <laughs> as you walked in the door. So this was the champagne station, but we stuck it on the ceiling instead of on the ground. Wow. Isn't that a cool idea? Wow. <laughs> Upside down. And of course, I think that exit, these are those epic shots, towards the, 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 the last page. And it was of Thomas in black and white. Look how cool the guy looks with both ties and done. You know they had a great time, right? And I love the idea of fireworks when they depart. This was really fun. I asked every one of the ladies to wear a red ball gown to dinner, which was kind of a cool idea. And then instead of having one mirror ball, we had 20. Great idea. Mm -hmm. Balloon drop. I think balloons have come a long way from how they used to be used today in balloon sculpture. But I think this is also a fun idea to use. Once again, using one, on fl one flower and like really turning them into sculpture. 
So a little trend report of some of the things that we're seeing for 2019. We love the idea of using uh, emojis, custom emojis. So this was kind of fun. So this was, uh, this was actually for a birthday party that we did. So it was actually, everybody, we, we sent them an emoji saying, welcome to New York. And then they always sent them on a shopping spree. So, you know, you went out, this was lemonade, just came out, Beyonce, your hot, your hot sauce in your bag, swag. And then, uh, and then, and then it was showtime, and it was interesting because you're in this cocktail reception and everything was white. And at exactly 8 o'clock at dinner time, everybody got this text, the, the, one with the, the girl with the feathers, and the whole room turned to chaparelli pink, and the doors opened and you went inside. And then we figured that everyone's going to probably need a charge on their phone around about 10, 10 p.m. So we sent, if you've got a low battery, so this guy had 10 battery charges on each side of his tuxedo. <laughs> So I had him in shorts, and he went around, and he charged, and he charged your battery. <laughs> no pun intended. Okay. And then on Sunday morning for the brunch, you got your Bloody Mary. Right? We love the idea of these fun social media uh, interactive video walls, interactive food stations, the idea of the big paella, when someone's presenting a big dessert for the entire table, pouring the hot sauce over it, the cake melts in front of you, or make your own s'mores. There's no such thing as too many candles. Why? Because it's instant ambience, takes years off your life, make you look young and glamorous, or like you just came back from somewhere fabulous. Uh, the cool thing about that last picture was if you walked into this room and you walked in from the left to the right, all these candles were at a looked like they were completely random. They only looked like they were in a row when you stood right now where the camera was. So you walked into a sea of candles, and all of a sudden, out of chaos came order. Wow. Monofloral, still love the idea. One color, one type, one container, lots of them. I think lighting has come such a long way. I mean, when you think about it, it extraordinary lighting or projection or video mapping in the past was so expensive. Uh, today, it's become a lot more affordable and, and easy to do. The picture in the middle, actually, was uh, inside of a studio, actually inside Museum of Modern Art in San Francisco. And we took them through the different journey of these two gentlemen as part of the engagement. You've all seen this. Isn't this fun? We used this for the entrance to a party the other day. It's a great way to create an immersive beginning. And of course, it's all programmable. So now, okay, so now I want to talk to you. So we have a new musical concept that we've worked with called Alchemy. And what Alchemy is, it is a, it's, is it a DJ, is it a band? It's a hybrid of a DJ and a band. So we start off with the DJ first, and the stage is completely clear. There's not a single instrument on the stage. You have a three-tiered white clear stage, and we have the DJ to the one side. And then for each song, we bring in the instruments that we strip the tracks for that make us the best version of that song, together with a group of six different vocalists. So each vocalist performs the way they perform for that particular song. And on top of that, the lighting is built in. So each lighting cue, as you'll see with each song, we know how the lights are going to work for every single song. So think of this as a canned two-hour show. So this is a little snippet, and this is also the product that I'm the creative director that I did with On The Move, with Troy Curtis and, 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 and Dion and team. And this is just so dynamic. I'm really, really proud of this. We've done this at a couple of weddings. We've booked this for a few, and it's energy off the charts. So that was the wrong video. 
but you get the idea. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it was the wrong video, but we'll somehow find a way to get you that video if you want. But you get the idea, right? Okay, does anybody have any questions? Well, first of all, thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy that. Thank you. Anybody getting married? What are some more of the trends coming this year that you see? Some are more of the trends coming this year. I'm not really a trend person. You know, I think that I prefer to design for the couple and certain things trend, like what's the big trend in food today is vegan, right? We kind of skip past vegetarianism. I mean, ABCV, dirt candy, I mean, everyone's doing the vegan food today. You know, the, the, the mixologist, well, they've gone to another whole level. So for me, I prefer to kind of work with a couple and design organically versus look at what actual trends are. Because I think when you look at trends, then all of a sudden everybody starts, work starts to look the same. And I think that Pinterest and Instagram have done enough homogenization to our industry to start with. Yeah. I used to know, I, I, I speak a lot all over the world. In the last year, I probably spoke on three different continents out of six different countries. And every, I still love to go to Brazil or to go to India or to go to China or to go to Peru or Lima or South Africa or Italy or France. Because everywhere I went, I'd always find what local people were doing. Now it all looks the same. Right? Everybody's following all the same people on Instagram or on Pinterest. So I'm very anti-trend. You know? I'd rather work with a couple and extract from them that really excites them and tell their story versus saying, I'm going to do what other people are doing. So let's not celebrate the trends. Sorry to disappoint you, but you get where I'm coming from. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. The first part of the question? You know, it's interesting, are more and more brides asking for destination weddings? Destination weddings became the biggest trend 15 years ago, and it's still the biggest trend. Yes. When you think about it, if you were to have your wedding in your hometown, you could end up with 350 people, right? That's going to like a banquet. You don't even get to spend 10 seconds with every person there. It's like, come and go, and it's gone, and it's done. I love a destination wedding because you get to share quality time with a group of people that you really love and adore, and with it. 72 hours or 96 hours, you're going somewhere fun, you really have a meaningful experience. So, you know, I always say when it comes to a guest list, ruthless editing, okay? <laughs> this is not your latest hits, this is your greatest hits, okay? When in doubt, throw it out. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. What are the things I still find challenging? Work. <laughs> Those of you in the industry all know we all today are working twice as hard for half of what we used to make, right? Yeah. But you know, that's exciting too, because you, you, can't, you can't change the past, but you can focus on the future, right? So it's forced us to be more creative, to be innovative, to do more with less, to, to tighten up the seat belts, to work harder, so, you know, every time I go to work, I mean, I'm excited to get up every single morning. I love working with the team that I get to work with, and it's, it's new every day. And so, you know, what are the challenges? Challenges are closing the deals. You know, I used to close 80% of every deal that came into my office. Today, I'm competing with Susie Smith down the road with her pop-up laptop. Her ink hasn't even dried on her, on her business cards yet. She's got gorgeous pictures, tells a great story, and she's my competition. She doesn't have an office, she's taking her meetings in the lobby of a hotel. You know, I've got a staff of 30 people. How do we compete? So I think my biggest challenge really is being able to explain to a client why we charge what we charge. You know, and you know how many times a year I told you one incident of a client coming back to us? At least two to three, it's having more now than ever, because as people are becoming more cost conscious in shopping, they're realizing it's much more than the look. The most important thing is how I make you feel, right? Yeah. right? And that comes from experience. And everyone's throwing around the word experience. It's only a good experience if you can put the word authentic in front of it. Yeah. So we know what we do. We create an authentic experience. You, know? you want to make sure that you create an emotional connection with every single one of your guests. Otherwise, it's just another party. So I would say that's probably the biggest challenge, is working in an unregulated business with no barrier to entry and being able to convince the client why we are worth what we're worth. Thank you. Yes. 
Hi, Ben. Um, how, how, I have two questions. How many people do you have in your team? And do you sleep at night? <laughs> <laughs> How many people do you sleep at night? And do I sleep at night? Okay. How many people have my team? We're about 26, 27 people in the team, which is made up of New York, which is our headquarters. We have an office in Los Angeles. We have five people out there. We have one in Saratoga, one in Las Vegas. And uh, it's made up of, of management. We have a team of producers. Each producer has a junior producer or an associate producer as their individual team. Then we have a creative team that we have all have access to, and then an IT team and legal. So it's very compartmentalized, and it, it works well. I've spent 30 years figuring this out. And do I sleep at night? So, um, <laughs> not the world's easiest sleeper, but I don't tell myself that because I've become that, so I sleep well, yes. And I think the most important thing in our business is, other than what we do, the second most, the other, the other most, Stressful business in the world is that of a traffic, air traffic controller. <laughs> yeah? And you think about it, we are like live television producers. There's no take two, sorry, can we do that again? Like, that's never going to happen. Like, you can do that in television. If you can't do that in what we do. So as important as it is to be connected, it's just as important as it is to be disconnected. I want you all to listen to me very carefully. I don't charge my phone in my bedroom. I charge my phone in the den because it's not the last thing I look at when I go to bed at night. If you can't sleep at night, that blue light will keep you awake. Okay, rather read a book or do something or do a meditation, whatever you need to do. In the morning when I wake up, I have to get up to go to the other room. Okay. I take the phone and I hit the snooze button. I come back, get back into bed, and I do five minutes just of chill, and then I do TM, Transcendental Meditation. I do 20 minutes every morning. After that, I do a little exercise called I am. Because if you can put the words I am in front of, any, of, of, of anything, action, you're giving yourself permission to do it, and you're giving the universe permission to support that. I'm healthy, I'm young, I'm beautiful, I'm energetic, I'm bringing in new business, I'm attracting this, and I do that for, the, for, for about uh, a minute, and I do my little prayer to your higher power, whoever it might be, and then I do 10 minutes of calm. Have you ever, do you know the calm? Yeah. It's best. It's the app. The app? The app. Oh, yeah, I love it. Religious. Every morning. Yeah. And the great thing is it's on a calendar and you can see exactly how many days you've done. You've got to do the calm. If you can't sleep at night, there's a calm yeah. sleep to go. There's a calm walking meditation. It's amazing. It's probably the best app and I use it every single day. Get up, have my hot water and lemon. And only then, only then will I look at my phone. Why? Because when you wake up after a good night's sleep, your brain is like a sponge. And if you switch that phone on immediately and you look at Instagram and say, I never got that fucking job. And someone else got it, okay? Who else got that job, whatever it might be, right? All of our nightmares, right? Or you put in the news and it's uh, the, the North Korean missile crisis. You're in a bad mood before you got out of bed. If you do it this way, you own your day. And you've set, you've set your intention for the day. You've decided how you want your day to be. So as important as it's to be connected, it's twice as important to disconnect. I think that's the most valuable thing I said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How much time do we have? A few more questions. Yes, Tom. I came to hear you speak 20 years ago, and you said something then, and let me know if you say this still applies. You talked about the, the wedding from the perspective of the person who is attending. From the moment they arrive, even the moment they receive the invitation, to the moment that they leave. And what's the dynamics of the relationship from their perspective? And how people normally forget that because they're thinking about food and flowers and the elements. When you come, you think about food and flowers and invitations. They're all different things that come from different people. So the one thing I always tell everyone, dream. It costs nothing to dream. And if you can dream, you can come up with a big picture. If you've got that big picture in your mind, that big picture will guide you in making every single creative decision that you have to make. And that's why I always say great style comes from ruthless editing. More than 20 years ago, now we have the internet on top of that, and we've got all these different platforms, we've got all these different areas of information that's coming to us nonstop. So it's really about saying no to the 98%, that's clutter and chatter that's in the way, to find the 2% to tell a good story. And just like I said, great style comes from Ruth's editing. Your journey starts with the invitation. 
the quality of the paper, the font, the color, those are all things that give us a window into your personality. They give us a window into what we're going to happen. So from there, from cocktail ceremony, cocktails, dinner, dance party, etc., right down to your thank you notes. There should be one arc of style that comes through everything. And I think that's where great style comes from, being able to tell a good story that is not all over the place. Pick one thing and do it well all the way. Thank you, Tom. Yes. How many events do you do in, in a day? How many events do I do in a day? Oh, God. Uh, we're, not, we're not like that. Um, so I think we do about 30 to 50 parties a year. Okay? Not a factory. We don't take every pro single project that comes our way. But what we do do is so that my time is spent as, as well and as wisely as possible, we have three different visions of our company. We have Team Cowie, which is the creative services of my team. I oversee that team. Uh, with the Team Cowie wedding, I don't attend all the meetings, and I might not be able to attend the wedding. But it's com com competitively priced with anyone in the market who's doing a good job. Okay? Then we've got the signature column. That's uh, a design fee plus a percentage, and uh, that, was, that is my personal services. I'm involved in that. And then we have Colin Calvi White, which is that very over the top, haute couture, made to measure things you've never seen before. We used to get more of those than what we get now, just, say, just saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got it? Thank you. Yes. Advice or suggestions for people who are in the industry, do this every day, and are now planning their own wedding? Oh, God, you and me. <laughs> Um, yes, I never, I never thought I'd ever do this, but I am. Yes. Uh, the interesting thing is I am getting married, and I never thought, thank you. And I just proposed in South Africa three weeks ago, so the wedding will be in South Africa. Thank you. So I've decided, you know, I don't want to see my, I want to reinvent it completely, the way that men get married. So. It's an opportunity to look at it a blank slate. And I wrote 10 books on the subject, and I've done this for countless other people. I never thought I'd do it for myself. But I'm actually not a very difficult client. <laughs> um, my partner said to me, uh, I think we should hire someone else. You might be too expensive for us. <laughs> but I think it's an opportunity because, you know, when you get married, right, it's not just another party. It's not another happening. It's your opportunity to make a joint statement of style. Okay, so I'm rather opinionated, in case you didn't notice. And, 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 and so I think there's two people in an equation. It's like, you know, your, your wedding is who were they before, but who are we together? So it's an opportunity to tell a joint story. So just wipe the slave clean, and remember there are no rules at all. You can do whatever you want as long as you're not offending someone. I used to say this years ago. You want to wear a lime green wedding dress and bring your bull terrier on a floral leash down the aisle to Billy Idol's white wedding? Be my guest. Right? So make it a blank slate. One last question. Yes. So where do you get your inspiration from? Where do I get my inspiration from? Every waking moment of the day. You know, I've traveled 14 and a half million miles around the world. I, was gone over almost 200 days last year. Markets, people, uh, magazines, inspira uh, 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 I don't do Pinterest anymore, Instagram. I, see, I get inspiration and most of my inspiration comes from the bride because the bride is the client. On that note, everybody, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you.